Every second of every day, an average of five airplanes are taking off or landing somewhere in these United States. Every day, our airlines fly, on the average, a distance equal to four round trips to the moon. Air cargo aircraft annually carry a half billion pounds of freight in and out of one large airport. So it all adds up to a lot of activity. As many as 50,000 passengers pass through a major terminal in a day, most of them with luggage. There are going to be continually more passengers. These passengers are going to fly more miles, and they are going to fly them faster. For the airlines to set up fast schedules and then meet them requires more than the raw speed of the jets. For you to have breakfast in New York and then be in Los Angeles in time for a second breakfast involves a lot more than the flying time from coast to coast. That is the reason for all the changes in facilities, equipment and techniques you are always seeing at airports and for the constant improvements being made behind the scenes that you don't see, but from which you benefit as a passenger. Each flight consists of innumerable, seemingly unrelated items, people, and activities that must be brought together for a temporary but specific purpose. How is it possible to coordinate all that is required for a flight? For flight after flight, day after day, and still to include provision for last minute changes? May I help you? I'm booked for 7.30. Is there any chance of getting out earlier? Be glad to check for you, Mr. Thompson. Hello. Do we have any space on flight 210 to Los Angeles? Thank you. I can book you on a 3 o'clock departure for Los Angeles, sir. Oh, good. All right, sir. You check your bag. The modern air terminal is designed for passenger convenience, with services available that help make air travel an integral part of the life of a nation on the go. This is a credit card call. Credit card number 232. Hello? Is that you, Daddy? Can we come to the airport? Here's Mommy. Hi. Hi, honey. Well, we finished early, so I'll be home at 5 o'clock instead of 7.30. Flight 210 at 5 o'clock. Your son would like to talk to you. You got something for me? <laughs> He's gone already. See you at five. Bye-bye. In this fast-moving world we're living in, the telephone is a part of the immediate, direct, and personal communications required in the jet age.
and so many kinds of information are transmitted over communication lines. For instance, the weather in Phoenix is clear and the temperature 76 degrees. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi, Hello you're there. You're sitting in 2D? Yes, 2D. I'll take your coat, okay? And your briefcase Thanks. goes under the seat. Right. Okay? Most of the communications at an airport are not by passengers, but for passengers by airline personnel. And most of these communications take place behind the scenes. It starts with when you ask about reservations. Your call may be to a centralized reservations office, which serves many cities, where it goes to the first available agent in the order in which it is received. For example, in making a reservation, you could dial a local airline reservations number in Washington, D.C., but telephone equipment would automatically switch your call to the airline's reservation center, such as this one in Charlotte, North Carolina. Here, the agent has immediate access to all required information and can make your reservation immediately. Or you may dial a local number in your city, talk to an agent in a local ticket office, and that agent will check with his airline's reservation center, which may be from a few miles to the length of the continent away. Telephones and telephone lines play an important part in making airline reservations. The airlines use high-speed computers to keep a record of future reservations. Your call is probably one of 10,000 to come into a reservation center that day. But the combination of computers and high-speed communications will give you an immediate answer. Another method. If you were to stop into a ticket office for flight information, say to Chicago or New York or even around the world, the agent would put your request for a reservation into a console which transmits it over the telephone lines to a centralized office. Within a second, the answer comes back. If you book the flight, the agent puts that data into the console for transmission to the reservation center for relay to the computer. Other reservation agents across the country now have this information available. Passengers board the plane only a few minutes before takeoff, but long before this, preparations for the flight are begun. <laughs> of course, some problems are bigger than others. Would you send up the seatbelt extension right away, please? Thank you. Preparation center in the airline's dispatch office, which is the funnel toward which all other company operations, equipment scheduling, maintenance, crew scheduling, ground operations, and reservations are directed. Need information to schedule fuel load for flight 210 to Los Angeles. What's the payload look like? Hmm, you have 90 passengers booked. We're picking up considerable freight. We'll call you back as soon as we can. Before the flight, the passenger manifest comes in from reservations. Then, immediately after takeoff, the passenger total will be teletyped to all downline airports. The number of meals that are put on board is determined from the manifest. The flight captain has checked with the dispatcher and now looks over the weather reports and charts en route. He's now preparing his flight plan, which will be forwarded by teletype to the Federal Aviation Agency Air Route Traffic Control Center. Direct communications are used for last-minute changes. We'll need four extra meals. One of those must be a salt-free diet. No smoking, and please fasten your seat belt. Oh, thank you. You're huh? welcome. Oh, that's handy. Now we can take off. Yeah, you're all set. <laughs> all set and on time. Ground control, United 210. Taxi clearance, please. Instrument flight plan, over. 
This is O'Hare Ground Control, cleared to runway 32 left. Taxi by the outer circular taxiway. Hold clear of the active. Contact the tower 118.1 when ready to go. The United 210, roger. Flight 210, this is the tower. Have your air traffic control clearance. Are you ready to copy? The United 210, go ahead. During the taxi run, the tower has checked by direct line to air traffic control for confirmation of the clearance filed by the pilot. This clearance specifies the exact route to be followed after takeoff. O'Hare Tower, United 210, ready for takeoff. Runway 32 left, go ahead. Roger, United 210, cleared for takeoff. United 210, roger. Takeoff is being monitored in the tower by radar departure traffic control of the Federal Aviation Agency. O'Hare Tower, United Flight 210, off the ground at 305. Roger, United 210, radar contact. Traffic at 3 o'clock, 2 miles eastbound. Traffic 10 o'clock, southbound, 4 miles. Over. Radar departure traffic control now gives United Flight 210 current position, heading to take altitude assignment, and reporting instructions. Report leaving 12,000. Change to air traffic control frequency 132.7. Roger, United 210 now leaving 12,000, changing to 132.7. The FAA Air Route Traffic Control Center is now monitoring Flight 210 on radar. Air traffic control, United 210, leaving 13000, heading 258 degrees. Roger 210. Continue on course, climb to flight level 39000. Report passing Cedar Rapids. The airlines could not operate as they do without the many means of communications, much of which is supplied by the telephone company. A large airport requires its own communication center to handle the behind-the-scenes activity. This central office is large enough to serve a community of 35,000. Here, it handles a communication mix of teletypewriters, high-speed data lines, radio lines, television, direct lines, and, of course, thousands of regular telephones. This telephone switching equipment provides the instant communications needed by airlines and airports. Direct communications continue while the plane is in flight. Air route traffic control centers continually follow the aircraft on radar scopes throughout its entire flight, passing control from one sector to another. In this way, all traffic is kept under surveillance at all times. Flight 210, contact Denver Center on frequency 133.5 now. Uh, Roger, United 210, changing to Denver Center, 133.5. The FAA controller keeps aircraft separated by time, distance, and altitude. In addition to direct and continuous contact with the controller by radio, a pilot receives reports at regular intervals from the Weather Bureau and also can talk directly to pilots of other aircraft in the area. Each flight also maintains voice contact through Air Inc., an airline's owned communications organization, where an operator receives the message by radio and then puts it on a teletype connected with the airline dispatch office. Information is entered on a flight progress chart and put into a computer where it is available for reservations 
and information agents throughout the airline system. Dick, will you call uh, Los Angeles dispatch and advise him we will be arriving 20 minutes ahead of the schedule? Roger. At Air Inc., a connection can be made for direct communication between the aircraft and the dispatch office. Los Angeles, United 210. Advise dispatch, we will arrive 20 minutes ahead of schedule. Any change in flight plan would be discussed and then announced to the passengers. This is your captain speaking, ladies and gentlemen. We've been pretty fortunate with the air currents up here today, and we'll be landing Los Angeles 20 minutes ahead of schedule. Thank you. Almost as soon as the passengers find this out, the information is available half a continent away. Flight 210 is reported 20 minutes early. It is now scheduled to arrive at 4.35 p.m. Oh. Aviation has come a long way in a few years. And communications also have come a long way in a few years. Each has helped the other grow. Many equipments and techniques that are now standard in everyday communications are the result of specific requirements by air travel communications. Air traffic is increasing. Airports keep right on building and adding runways as well as lengthening them. Even now, a jet may hold on the ground in Miami for conditions to clear at its destination in Houston. This is possible because of the speed of the jet and because communications are immediate and direct. Gear down, fan it back. Los Angeles Approach United, 210, auto marker inbound. Roger, 210, clear to land. United 210, clear to land. Los Angeles Ground Control, United 210. Taxi clearance to the gate, please. United Flight 210, turn right at the first high-speed taxiway. Clear the gate 72. Flight 210, now arriving at gate 72. Is that Daddy? Yes. Come on, children. When you fly, there's a lot of talk by a lot of people about your trip. When you make a reservation, you are provided with immediate information as to the status of your flight. As a passenger, it's just a matter of boarding the plane and enjoying the trip. While in the air, your aircraft is in constant touch with many sources of information. This is all because along with your reservation, you also reserve the benefits of modern communications. And I love it. Have a date for dinner tonight. Oh, that's fine for you, but my wife's going to pick me up, and I told her this plane wouldn't be here for well, almost 30 minutes yet. Mm, she may surprise you. Wouldn't be the first time. Bye now. Bye. Thanks for a great trip. You're welcome, sir. Bye-bye. Goodbye now. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. That was a wonderful meal. Oh, thank you. Come back again real soon. Thanks for being so Good nice. Evening, Good evening. But this is great. How'd you know the plane was going to be early? I phoned. 